Hey, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Street Level Strategies. I am joined today by Karen Nungesser, Assistant Vice President, Mortgage Loan Officer at United Community Bank. How are you doing today, Kara? Good. Hi, Bobby Joe. I'm so excited to have you on today. Now, some of you guys might know her by her Instagram handle. Um, So we're going to get a lot uh, into that today. But really, um, Kara, I have her on today. I'm so excited um, because she's really going to be talking about social. And I know that that's a hot topic. um, And this is something that Kara has invested in heavily over this past year and has seen some great Mm -hmm. success. And so I'm so happy to have you on, Kara. Do you mind just giving a little um, intro to you? I know you have a super fun background and we'll kind of get into that. But let's just do a quick intro to you first to start. Okay, thank you. So first off, thank you for having me. This is awesome. Um, so I had a very unconventional beginning. My like yeah. origin story is not typical. So I had the passion to be a pastry chef. And so I went to the <laughs> Culinary Institute of America and I you know, got my hands dirty with not mortgages, but like flour, eggs, all of that stuff until yeah. I realized that um, you know, I made absolutely no money and was working 80 <laughs> hours a week. <laughs> right. And so um, I found my way down south to Charleston. I followed kind of like the food, you know, the foodie lifestyle in Charleston. And my mom was like, hey, that's cute. You know, so great for you that you're, you know, doing your baking and pastry thing, but you need like a bachelor's degree. Like, and let's so, make a living. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let's actually make sure you have a backup yeah, plan. And thank exactly. God she did. <laughs> um, <laughs> And so I got my bachelor's in business. And from there, I kind of took off more into like the financial services. I was working for a software company. Um, I was like a little bit bipolar with what I wanted to do career wise until my aunt brought me into mortgage about seven years ago. And so here I am. (laughs) That's so crazy. One of the things that I thought was so cool, right? Like you don't, you hear mortgage stories, like how someone get in the Mm -hmm. industry, like that is crazy when you to when yeah. I well, we were on site with you guys right and you were on one of the panels yeah. and what you mentioned that and I literally was like I have never heard someone <laughs> go from being a pastry chef into the mortgage industry but here we are but what I will say Kara is one thing that was super cool that you were um that you were talking about that like caught my eye was you were mm-hmm. mentioning about how some of the you know just the way that they they teach you you know when you mm-hmm. go to school to be a pastry chef and some of the things that you've learned how have you translated that into kind of yeah. how you do mortgages today? And how has that changed kind of how you, you know, your customer service and your, mm-hmm. you know, how you represent yourself? I'd love to talk a little about that. So it is fine dining. So everything is oriented towards, you know, just the experience, like how from the right. moment that you walk into a restaurant to the moment that you walk out, like it's the experience. And yes, people, you know, there's some excellent food, but it's more tailored around just this superior experience that you receive from beginning to end. Right. Um, and so I just, that's how I kind of take some of that and put it into how I am as a mortgage loan officer, because I want, you know, it's still a transactional experience. Right. Like when you're walking into a, a restaurant, it's transactional. It's the same thing with a mortgage. Right. And so I need to make sure from beginning to end that it's just a superior experience. And so that's how I kind of take that um, that client service aspect to the, to the next level. You're not just a transaction yeah. to me. I want you to have a great time. I want this to be right. memorable for you and I want it to be positive. Right. Right. I love that. And there's so much built around customer experience because that's yep. where you get that repeat customer. That's where you get yep. the people coming back to you and the repeat transactions. Right. Yeah. One thing you were saying when you were saying this, like fine dining experience, all I can think about is that show the bear. I don't know if you've watched it. Um, <laughs> no, but I, I haven't. Literally, you haven't. You have no. to. Um, I don't know if anyone else has, but I loved the show, but it gave me really big insight into like the fine dining experience yeah. and how deeply they are about that. But I love that yep. you're saying that that's translated into you know the mortgage industry and how you right. serve your clients and so anyways i digress i love that show but that's amazing um okay so oh, I'm yeah you you have to it's actually really good it's a little it's a little intense i'd say but it's it's really cool to just hear about the experience which i had no idea but oh, cool. anyways i digress um let's talk a little bit about social media so okay one of the things that, you know, on the panel that you were talking about is your journey with social media over this mm-hmm. past year. And honestly, you mentioned you're like, I haven't been, I'm not, I'm not perfect. I haven't been doing it a long time. Yeah. Um, but I you have been and you invested in it. And one of the mm-hmm. things I want you to first, you know, start off talking about is a little bit of, you know, why? Like why what made you be like, I'm gonna invest in in doing social media because for a mm-hmm. lot of people, I think we all hear you should, you should, you should use it. But yeah. what actually made you jump over the cliff and be like, all right, I want to do this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start, you know, working on it. Well, 
to kind of start this off, I was anti-social media for a while. Yeah. yeah, one of my best friends is a loan officer and she has been doing it for years and years and has had great success. And I would just kind of look at her and be like, that's not for me. Like I, there's right. no substitute for kind of that client experience that I was used to with the fine dining where it's a face-to-face interaction. I was able to build right. a relationship, build that rapport. And I was like, you know what? Social media is not for me. And then I think as we've seen the market change over the last few years, it kind of evolved into something that was necessary in order for us to kind of stay yeah. relevant um, as right. a loan officer. And so I was like, you know what? I went to a mortgage bankers <laughs> association meeting and there were all these Gen Zers next to me and right. they were just like, blah, 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 social media, social, social media. media. <laughs> yeah. And I would laugh at them and I would be like, no, I mean, there's no substitute for a good face-to-face traditional sales call. But then they were surpassing me in volume and they were new and they were just killing it with the social media. Right. And I was like, you know what? It's time for me to let go of you know the old traditional norms and I need to try something new. I mean, what else do I have to lose? Yeah. And so yeah. at the beginning of this year, I was like, I'm jumping in. I'm going to figure this out. And if it works, it works. And if it doesn't, then I tried it. But at least I need to go ahead and try something. So yeah, that's, that's how it that's funny you, started. Yeah, it's, it's funny you say that because you're like, look at all these people and you're like, wait, they're surpassing me in volume. Like, what are they doing? Right. And you're like, yeah. they're all doing social media. Right. And so mm-hmm. that's when you see that you're like, all right, clearly there's something that's working yep. here. Um, so let's jump right in. And you did. And that's what I think has been super cool. So I shouted out your Insta handle. Um, and I oh. love for you to talk about it because I love that you, you know, you didn't have Instagram or anything before, but you created right this um, brand for yourself, right? Mm-hmm. And I, your your brand, I'm going to shout it out, but like care about mortgage. And and the whole idea was like, you care about mortgages. Yes. And that was so powerful. Talk a little bit about, you know, just like why and how you brand yourself and like your starts with, you know, creating your Instagram account. Um, so I, again, going back to the mortgage ban, the mortgage bankers panel, there was, um, a young lady there that was fantastic. And she actually was talking about social media and she was a loan officer and then created her own social media company. And she was awesome. And she was talking, I was picking her brain and she was like, you got to do this. You got to do this. And I'm like, no, 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 no. (laughs) And she's like, well, first you need to create a brand for yourself and you need to kind of figure out what that is. And I was like, okay, so I, tried to be really thoughtful with it. I mean, yeah. I you have to do a lot of research. I went and I looked right. at a bunch of other people, not just loan officers, but everybody's like Instagram accounts yeah. or Facebook accounts. And I wanted to figure out what that meant for me. And so then I just right. kind of sent out a mass text to all my family and, and friends. And I was like, hey, what do you think about this, 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 this? I kind of did Love my it. own little family poll because yes. they're probably like, hey, that looks stupid. Don't, don't do but that. But they thing. know you the best too. They know <laughs> yeah. you the best though, which is, I think is so smart. I love that. Yeah. So that's how it kind of came about. And then, um, but it ultimately took a lot of research. You got to see kind of what yeah. the, the do's and don'ts are and figure out what it is. Otherwise it's not going to be authentic. You got to figure out yeah. you and then you got to put that in, in social media in order for it to work. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So now that we've kind of gotten the background, like tell us a little mm-hmm. bit about what is the, what does it look like for you using social? How do you use that for, you know, you know, how, how are you getting leads from social? Have you seen success with it? Like what is the, your process with social now look like? Um, mm-hmm. And where are you seeing the most success? So I kind of was under the impression that I, you're supposed to be doing social media so that it would be like a, a contact to meet a borrower when really mm-hmm. for me, it has been a contact to meet other realtors. And, mm-hmm. you know, going back to kind of like all the sales, there was no replacement for a sales call. That right. is still true. Like, I think I have a hybrid yeah. approach where I still want to do the traditional sales call to get to know yeah. people. But the amount of people that I am reaching with social media is exponentially more than what I could ever do face to face. And so right. some of my videos, you know, I have, I'm not the best at it, but I'm still learning. And you can kind of figure out like what videos are more attractive to realtors right. than others. And so I try to tailor my content to what, you know, they want to see. So then they'll in turn, like share, comment, all of those totally. things to kind of get that algorithm moving so that I'm able to be out in front of people more. And so um, it's been really successful. You definitely have to just tailor it more to the realtor so that they can then share it. And in turn, so far, a couple of my success stories, I usually get one referral a week from social media. Um, I, so far I've gotten three contracts accepted 
just Amazing. like I was representing the buyer, but just the listing agent on the other side recognized me from social media. So they were like, oh, I trust okay. you. And honestly, they have no idea if I'm good at not what I'm doing in my job, yeah. but yeah. they just saw and they but knew they, that I was yeah. a real person. So right. relevance. Exactly. It's like market. just getting your, yeah, it is all about re relevancy, right? About just getting yourself. But I think it's really interesting that you're saying that um, especially for, I think it can feel daunting when you're like, how yeah. am I supposed to, you know, be doing this and getting to all mm -hmm. these consumers rather than I like your approach of I'm actually tailoring my content to the agents and the agents yeah. are the ones who are on social posting and all of their yeah. buyers and their network are the ones who are engaging. And I think that you've had a few like really, yeah. really powerful posts that have actually taken off and you yeah. do a lot of content with like properties and things like that to help yeah. agents promote, which I think is really cool. Yeah, I do um, every Friday. So our bank has path listings that we put out and it's 100% financing yeah. and no mortgage insurance and it's specific eligible properties. And so every Friday, I try to be incredibly That's consistent cool. with it. I put them out and agents look for them now. They want to know which yeah. properties are the eligible properties. And so I think yep. that that's really helped. And I usually get like 10 to 15 just inquiries about those properties every week. And sometimes, you know, what you do with those inquiries is up to you. You can then target right. a relationship or it can lead to a referral, but it's at least something more than what I was doing last year, which was just totally. manually identifying agents and trying to court them so that we would be able to be referral partners. Yeah. For sure. I love that. And I think it's cool that you talked about um, the consistency aspect because sometimes yeah. I think it's daunting. Daunting also to say, well, what do I post about? That's kind of I, I don't need to come up with something super creative every week. Which yeah. granted, like I love that you kind of have some organic posts. Like if, if mm -hmm. A, if you're listening, go follow Kara. I'm um, Kara about mortgage. Um, but <laughs> number two, it's like you have some really organic stuff, like some funny stuff where you're at like the car dealership and you're just like yeah. posting and you come and it comes to you, right? I thought that was so funny. But then you also yeah. have the consistency where you're like, I know every week I'm gonna post about this. And mm -hmm. then I love what you said also that the agents then look for it. And that's what yep. you're trying to create is this like um, consistency to where they you know, know where yep. to go to find you and to, and, and to see your posts. So I yeah. love that. And even in between like it. all the sales calls and stuff, it's kind of like a little drip campaign <laughs> totally. where it's like, I'm just constantly there. I'm still there. I'm still, even if you're not totally. actively watching my content, then you just see me pop up. You know, so, yeah, for sure. I'm still here. I love it. You're still here. <laughs> Thank you. No, I love it. I love it. That's amazing. Any other last kind of thoughts as in, as it comes to social? I know we kind of covered a lot, you know, how you got in, how, how to leverage it, some best practices. But if you're, you know, a loan officer who's sitting on the sidelines kind of like, I don't know, like social still really scary. Like what is what, probably one of the one pieces of advice that you would say to, you know, a loan officer who's trying to, you know, jump in? Oh, gosh, I mean, you really do just have to start. I think the just yeah. trying to make it perfect ahead of time where you're just like, I don't know what I should be doing. I don't know if I should be totally. doing this. It's the hesitancy, I think, that stops a lot of people. Oh, yeah. You really just have to jump in. Um, and then even, you know, I'm not perfect. When it came to, I like took a couple days off and I wasn't posting. And then for me to restart posting, I still was like, I don't want to do it's this. It's hard. Yeah. I know. You just really have to. It's, I feel like it's like exercising sometimes. You just got to put those it shoes is. on. You got to go out for the jog. And you'll feel better. It afterwards. is. <laughs> Literally, it will feel better afterwards when you get those, you know, yeah. people and those people DMing you and, and asking you in the inquiries, right? You just yeah. like you said, like you are truly getting leads from your posts, right? And yep. because you've created this brand that's kind of taken off yep. on social, which I think, and again, what you said, people trust you. It's like, yep. It's it's interesting when you talk about, you know, the Gen Z or the younger generation, mm -hmm. um, there is a sense of like, you, you don't have an Instagram, you don't have like, I don't trust yeah. you if I can't look you up yeah. and see who you are, right? Or like, what's mm -hmm. what, what are you about, right? And I think you come across in your post um, just very authentic of like, I do care about you. And I, I love that about, and that's probably one of the oh, reasons why I brought you on because I know, I know. <laughs> so anyways, I, that's why we hit it off. But yeah. um, seriously, thank you so much for joining Kara and just talking a little bit about it. I hope anyone listening is, you know, feeling a little more inspired to get on social and put themselves out there. So again, thank you so yeah, much, Kara. It was such a great time. No, thank you, Bobby Joe. I appreciate it. Of course. Well, I'm sure I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Bye. See ya.